Hey guys, I haven't really been doing a whole lot down in the workshop, it's still a complete mess down here, but uh, I wanted to put out a video, so I brought out a radio that actually a local collector dropped off for me to restore quite a while ago, but uh, I got stuck on it and uh, never finished it, so I thought now would be a good time to tackle it again. So what it is, is a uh, Crosley 10-137, also known as the dashboard, because it, well, kind of looks like a car dashboard. Conventional, uh, All-American 5, and I recapped it. Very straightforward, good condition, uh, except the power switch volume control has been replaced, but... Uh, did a decent job and the control is good so that shouldn't be an issue. What was an issue though was something that uh, plagued me back when I did my GE I think 212 which was the loop antenna and like GE Crosley decided to save some money and uh, sort of build it into the back. So this is the back it's like masonite and the antenna was made out of very thin copper that was sort of stamped out and then glued to this backing board. Well, over time the glue failed and the antenna fell off and was just a complete mess. Back when I did my GE, I painstakingly glued it back down. This one was well beyond that, so I just took the whole thing off. And I got to thinking, well... And this radio was designed to uh, also work with an external antenna, so who needs the loop? Uh, one little problem, though, when I hooked it up. So, here's the schematic. So, conventional American 5, um, oscillator, converter tube, one eye of stage, detector, and AVC, diode, and first audio amp, and then a... Uh, Audio output tube and uh, rectifier. So here's the loop that's all scrambled, but hey, external antenna, so I'll just hook that up. Well, got three wires here. One of them is uh, for ground, going over to the jack, which is kind of odd, but that's how I did it for the phono input. And, uh, well, let's try hooking up an external antenna to the other two. So this one's going right to the tuning cap. That seems like a good place to try. So I got a random length uh, wire here. Let's hook it up, power up the radio, and see what happens. Okay, the radio's warmed up. Got a nice little hum. Let's try tuning the dial. Hmm, well that doesn't sound too good. Hmm, it's the same thing again. Or at least it sounds similar, very garbled. Yeah, I think it is the same station. I'm receiving it over and over in different spots and it's very garbled. So what gives? Well, that's where I got kind of stuck and I thought there maybe uh, there was something else like silver mica disease and one of the IF transformers or something wrong with the local oscillator. Well, I asked run online and it turns out that the loop antenna is an integral part of the operation of the radio. Now, I'm used to working on older radios where you just use a random length long wire antenna, earth ground, none of those loop stuff. Well, it turns out the loop actually forms a tank circuit with the uh, tuning cap and this is also the antenna transformer so it's both an antenna and uh, a transformer and it's a, a tuned circuit for the AM band so this loop and its inductance is critical in conjunction with these capacitors for the radio to operate properly alright so asked around maybe somebody's got one well yeah somebody did and he sent it to me. Just one problem. He also thought he'd do me a favor and include a spare chassis. Hey, great. Spare parts are always good. But he put the chassis on top of the antenna and it got pretty trashed in shipping. So, <laughs> here's what it looks like. This is that thin stamped copper. 
and you see it got pretty mangled. So I just kind of sat on things for a while. It's kind of an irritated. Not at him. Hey, did me a huge favor by sending it to me. Uh, just a shame I got damaged in shipping. I thought about maybe trying to repair this and glue this down. Uh, but hey, others suggested, well, make a new one. So I carefully counted the turns and figured out how this thing is set up. So turns out the external antenna input is this lug down here. And it's simply a loop that goes around the outside and goes to this lug. That's it. Not connected to anything else. It's just one single loop around the inner loop, and the inner loop is the key part. Well, I carefully counted the turns, 28 turns. So, got some wire out, made something with 28 turns, so let's hook this up and see how things work. Alright, I've got my loop antenna hooked up. Let's see if that made any difference. Yeah, the garbling's gone. Not very loud, though. Ah, position definitely makes a big difference. So on the original radio would have been... Like this. However, I've noticed when I take my hand away... Volume drops off a little bit. That's right. We have exclusive auto show financing and lease specials. So I think things will improve if I uh, wind it a bit better. Uh, his inductance is number of turns, but also how you space the winding. I also want to find some enamel wire rather than using this thickly insulated Teflon type wire. The Audi Exchange in Island Park. Expect the exception. Tyler may be familiar with John Tyler because he was the Tippecanoe and Tyler 2. The score is 670 the score.com brought to you by your Chicago. So the takeaway from this is yes. <laughs> a loop is a very important integral part of an all-American 5 type radio like this. And it's not all that difficult to make a replacement if you need to. Just carefully count the number of turns and uh wind something up. And I've also gotten some tips on how to mount it to the board. One of which is to cut some diagonal slots in it. And then you can kind of weave the wire around this using it as a form. And I may do something like that. Or I may drill some holes and put uh, posts in each corner and then I can wind the wire around. Either way, I'll, I'll rig something up. I'm going to go through the alignment. In case you're wondering what it looks like, well, here's the cabinet. Came in a number of different color styles. This would be the chartreuse and gold. This is the original paint in really good condition. The feet have rotted away, which is a really common problem. So much of the replicas are made. And uh, I think we'll be ordering some up. Here's the original label. I hope you enjoyed this little look at making a loop antenna for a Crosley Model 10 137.